the last thing I'm going to look at for these um, baby weights is to see if the difference with between the never smoked and the ever smoked is between all of the babies whose mums have ever smoked or if it's just one of those categories of ever smoked. So if we go back to the variable view and we just have a look at the smoking we can see that the three categories for ever smoked is now smoking, smoked until pregnancy and former smoker. And so we're interested in if there any difference between these three groups or are they all equally as impactful on the baby weight. So I would start again probably by doing a graph and I'm going to go straight to the graph of the means with the confidence intervals. Now you can either, if you've got a graph sitting in there and you just want to change one thing, you can either drag that out or you can just drag something else on top of it. So smoking status there, if I just drag that on top, um, SPSS will just replace it. There are a few graphs where you can add multiple variables into the same axis and if you drag it into a particular spot it will add it in as another variable, um, but for most of them it will just replace it. Okay. So again, um, well we can pretty much see from here that it's the now smoking which is lower than the other three. It might be helpful to zoom in just a little bit on that. So I'm just going to change the y-axis again. So I was just going through clicking on the graph, clicking on a y-axis, going into scale and I'm going to change that minimum uh, to be 100. So really that's zooming in quite a lot I suppose. And now we can see that there is these three categories almost completely overlap. The never smoked, smoked until pregnancy, former smoker and then the now smoked is lower. Now you might be wondering why these confidence intervals are wider for the mean for the smoked until pregnancy or the former smoker and there's a couple of reasons that can happen. It can either mean that there is just more variation in these babies or it could actually mean that we have a much smaller sample size and so we are less sure of our estimate of the mean. So the confidence interval is about how good our estimate of the mean is and if you've got a small sample size then your um, estimate of the mean is not going to be fantastic so you'll have a wide interval. So we could actually have a look at that. It'll come out when we do the analysis how many we've got in each group. Now to test means, the t-test will only do two means at a time. If we want to test four means or anything over two, uh, we'll need to do an analysis of variance and we can do that in the compare means dialog. And the very basic form of ANOVA is just our very simple one-way ANOVA where we've got one continuous variable and a number of categories. Our dependent variable is the birth weight, our factor is our explanatory variable and that's going to be our smoking status and we don't have to put in what the categories are which is good. Um, I can never remember what's in these boxes, contrasts, no don't worry about that. Post hoc, we do want that and we had in the notes just to look at two keys, usually they all come out fairly similar, you could go through an experiment if you're very bored. Um, options. So homogeneity um, means testing to see if the variances are all the same. We could do that. Uh, the analysis of variance is valid when we have roughly equal variances but it's con considered to be a very robust test in that even if our variances aren't quite equal and they may not be because this, this one seems to have, um, I didn't do a box plot, there might be more variation in um, these ones, could have a look at that. Um, but usually it holds up pretty well so we'll just um, ignore the that test for the moment. Okay. Actually before I look at this I will go back and do a box plot just to see what the variation in the... See I can't see all the variation of the whole distributions with the interval plot because it's just showing me the mean and confidence interval and I just want to see the variation of all the observations just for a moment. Oh no, actually there's the most, looks like the most variation is here but again that's with um, the outliers. Okay, so back up to the analysis of variance. So the ANOVA box itself is really quite small and all this big stuff is the post hoc stuff. Now analysis of variance is testing to see 
the null hypothesis is that all the means are equal and the alternative hypothesis, hypothesis is that at least one of the means is different. However, the test itself does not tell us how many of the groups are different from the other groups or even which group is different from the other groups. It just tells us that at least one of them is. And then we do the post hoc test to find out what's going on. So in this case, we'll probably just go straight to looking at the significance value. Our null hypothesis is that the means are all the same. We have a very low p-value, 0 0.000. So we have very strong evidence uh, against the null hypothesis and therefore we'll conclude that at least one of the means is different from the others. Now we can see which one it is from the graph and this is why I like drawing the graphs because it usually makes it very obvious what's going on. But we can test each of those with our post hoc tests. So post hoc just means it's been done after. What the post hoc tests uh, do in this case is it just compares every pair of variables, every pair of groups. So it compares the never smoked with the now smokes, the never smoked with the smoked until pregnancy, and the never smoked with the former smoker. So you just got to read these through one at a time. So is the never smoked different from the now smokes? We've got a very low p-value and so yes there is a significant difference there. So that's the never smoked with the now smoked and that's where we can see yes they are significantly different. If we go is the never smoked different from the smoked until pregnancy we've got a really high p-value so no that's not significant there's no difference between the never smoked and the smoked until pregnancy and we can see that from the plot. And then the same with never smoked with former smoker, that's very high too. Uh, then the test takes out the next variable and compares that with the rest and you can see that it's going to double up because we've already tested the pair of never smoked and now smoked and now it's going to do it again and we get the same p-value. And so by the time you get halfway through these multiple comparisons you've actually already looked at all the pairs and some other software packages are smart enough to know that and they actually start deleting some of the output so you just get this nice triangle in your multiple comparisons. But in this case it doesn't but you can see that the numbers are going to double up and therefore you really only have to read it halfway through to get all the information. So the now smoked, if we look here at our p-values they're all zero or all less than 0 0.000. So the now smokes is significantly different from the other three groups and again that's what we could see from the graph. The now smokes is significantly different from the other three groups. So that's one way of doing the multiple comparisons. Um, the other information it gives you is the uh, subsets and that's where it tries to put things into groups which are different from each other. So this is the first group and this is the second group. Anything that is in the first group but not in the second group is significantly different from the second group. Occasionally you can get a variable that appears in both the groups. So if the never smoked that wouldn't make any sense. If the say smoked until pregnancy appeared in both groups, I wish that yellow box would stop popping up, that would mean that the now smokes is different from the never smoked but it's not different from the smoked until pregnancy and the smoked until pregnancy would not be different from the never smoked. It gets a little bit confusing, might have to wait till we see an example of that. For the moment you've got a nice clean distinction where you've got one thing by itself and the other three together. You don't have another group crossing both of them. So what you can get sometimes is another group in the middle that actually crosses a little bit of this group and a little bit of that group. So that even though these two are different from each other, there's a piggy in the middle that is not different from either of them. So you get these complicated relationships between the groups. Um, so which one is easy to read? Mm, I don't know. Usually, no, I guess it's personal preference. I like to do the graph. That would be my personal preference. Do the graph and then I would double check that with these significance figures. Uh, this is more compact. If you were trying to write a paper then um, or a very succinct report then this is uh, quicker to put this in because it doesn't take up as, as much space. And that is analysis of variance. So the only other thing you might do with analysis of variance is to go back and check that your, vari uh, your variances are equal in the three groups before you do the test. Um, but we're not going to do that in this course.